It's time for another episode of Ectavites, a production of the Eastern Caribbean Telecommunications Authority. I'm your host, Coretta Cookstrout, Ectel's Communications and Media Relations Manager. Good afternoon. This is our fifth episode, but just in case it's your first time with us, let me just quickly point out that Ectel is the regulatory body for telecommunications in its five member states namely the Commonwealth of Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. ECTEL is made up of three components, a council of ministers, a regional directorate, and a national telecommunications regulatory commission or the NTRC in each member state. So today is all about spectrum. Yes, it might sound technical, but rest assured, that our special guest, Ectel's Engineer Spectrum Officer, Mr. Alvin Augustin, is going to help us to understand more about spectrum, why it is so important in the field of telecommunications, and how Ectel and the NTRC go about managing spectrum in our five member states. So we're going to jump right into it because we have a lot to talk about. Welcome, Mr. Augustin, or may I call you Alvin? Hi, Coretta. Good afternoon. Yes, you may call me Alvin. That's fine. Thanks. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Alvin, in simple terms, what is spectrum as it relates to telecommunications? Well, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the question, Coretta. It's an um, it's issue persons um, try to wrap their heads around when we talk about um, spectrum, but more specifically, when we're dealing with um, telecommunications, we speak about the radio frequency spectrum, which is part of the electromagnetic spectrum that encompasses radio communication services. So this is where your, this is the, the radio frequencies or the, the spectrum on which your cell phone works, walkie talkie, even your remote start for your vehicles, they work on all on radio frequencies. And we at ECTEL and the NTRCs are charged with managing that precious resource for the ECTEL member states, I should say. Okay, yes. thanks for that. I, I wasn't aware of the remote start for VTEL. Yes, yes, all, all of it, all of wireless technologies based on radio frequencies. Okay, all right, thanks for that, Alvin. So You're most welcome. As the engineer slash spectrum officer, what are some of your key functions here at Ectel? Yes, well, as the engineer, I'm responsible and I also assist with the management of the Ectel, the Ectel member states radio frequency spectrum. Um, we we are we assist the member states, particularly the NTRC, with issues of resolving harmful interference when it comes to radio frequency. We also assist them with um, developing or acquiring um, equipment for monitoring the radio frequency spectrum. Uh, outside of um, radio frequency spectrum, we also assist with the assignment of telephone numbers and other technical matters um, related to regulation of telecommunications services and networks. Okay, 
Okay, you just said something, Alvin. Forgive me, mm-hmm. if you don't know, so I'm going to ask. When you say yes. harmful interference, what are you referring to exactly as it pertains to? Yes, um, yeah. When we talk about harmful interference, we're talking about uh, degradation of the telecommunication services that use radio communications. In other words, if you are listening to a radio program on your favorite radio station and then something comes over that which is not being transmitted by the authorized radio station, it would be considered harmful interference. Anything that degrades the signal or the the receipt of the transmission signal to a point where that message is not um, is not received by by the receiver. So that's what we'll call it. And there can be various sources of harmful interference, uh, unauthorized transmitter, or even within the, the transmission itself, there may be some technical issues with the equipment, which would cause harmful interference. So in a nutshell, that's what it is. Okay, so just a follow-up question, Alvin. Mm-hmm. I know sometimes I'm driving, right? And yes. um, all of a sudden, say I'm on RCI or, you know, um, whichever other station. Yes. Another station, I guess it's from Martinique, pops in. Um, is that regarded as harmful interference it, or is that something else? Yes, yes. That's a, that's a perfect example. That would be basically two radio stations that are operating on the same frequency. But due to their close geographic proximity, their signals are coming across and they're in being interfered with each other. So a receiver, depending on which, at which point they are, would be picking up both signals at a level where one would be interfering or canceling the, the <clears throat> transmission from the other station. So one of the, the, um, the major issues that um, spectrum managers have to deal with is, is just that try to mitigate um, instances of harmful interference. And with radio frequency, we understand that it's a natural phenomena and it does not recognize national borders. So what happens, uh, member states or, or member countries, they belong to the International Telecommunication Union. They meet ever so often um, to agree on certain protocols or certain standards where it comes to radio communication. And there's a, it's a, a meeting that's held every four years called the World Radio, World Radio Communications Conference, WRC, and they agree on a set of um, standards and conventions um, to manage um, the, the scarce radio frequency resource that we all have so that it could be used for socioeconomic benefits for all, all the world and all persons in the world. Okay, in- yes. very interesting. I know I'm, I'm really simplifying it, Alvin, because mm-hmm. when you hear spectrum, you know, it sounds so technical, but I think if we break it down like this, persons would be better able to understand what we're talking yes. about. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the, yeah, as you said, the part of it is that it's, it, it's uh, such a, it's, it's, it forms part of our, of our everyday life that we don't even recognize it. It, it has become ubiquitous in terms of being everywhere. I mean, when we look at the technology we're using now, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi is based just on that, on radio frequency, and we take it for granted. For example, if, if the Wi-Fi goes down at home, you know, everybody become, is aware of it. So it, it has formed part, it has, and it's playing a more important role in our lives every day. Yes, and exactly. part of our responsibility here at ECTEL and the NTRC is, in, is to ensure that that resource is, is available to all sectors of society, um, to the private industry, public industry, and, and other stakeholders that they do have, get equitable access to that, that resource. Right. So that's one of our goals as a as a regulator and as our advisor on policy to the governments of the ECTEL member states. 
Okay, my next question will be about the roles of Excel and NCRC. But before I go there, I just want to wrap up on the point of the whole harmful interference. Yes. If someone were to experience this, Alvin, would they report it to Excel, the NCRC, or do they call the radio station? What recourse? Yes, that's a that's a that's a good point. Um, at the point, um, who the person receiving the interference. Um, as I said, with the example you gave with the radio station, you could report it to your the radio station who would then make a complaint to the National Telecommunications Regulatory Commission, the NTRC. The NTRC, when they investigate and if they find that there's a source of interference, they would um, seek the assistance of ECTEL in, in trying to resolve that, that um, harmful interference. So we stand ready to assist the NTRC when they need in terms of um, resolving issues of harmful interference. If it's an issue, like as you said, where it's coming from Magnic, they then they would reach out to Ectel who would then um, coordinate activities between the local NTRC and the uh, the overseas regulator to ensure that we address the issue of the interference. Okay, all right, thanks for the explanation. Yes, um, you're most welcome. Right, so in terms of roles now, what are the roles of Excel and the NTRCs in managing spectrum in the five member states? Yes, in terms of overall management of spectrum you know, for the Excel member states there, Excel is the overall coordinating regional body. Part of our duties are that we set up a harmonized um, structure, a harmonized framework for how spectrum is managed and used in the ECTEL member states. On the national level, the NTRCs are in charge of monitoring and managing the national spectrum of each of their member states. So they, as we mentioned, they will go on to um, resolve issues of interference or complaints dealing with radio frequency interference. They would also ensure that um, persons or persons who use the spectrum are licensed under the respective acts, whether it be the Telecommunications Act or as we are migrating to the Electronic Communications Act. So they would ensure that persons are authorized to use um, the spectrum in, um, under the laws of the country. All right. Okay, so um, as we mentioned at the beginning, many persons probably never really heard of the term spectrum or if they heard of it, never probably fully understood it, but um, they would be aware of wireless technologies. You mentioned- That's the correct. Smartphones, the laptops, video games, which the children are using a lot of because it's summertime. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the correlation between the two, can you break that down? What I'm trying to get at is, mm -hmm. um, would you be able to enjoy wireless technologies without spectrum? Is there any possible way? Well, well, not in our current current <laughs> in our current state. Um, uh, the honest truth is, um, there are technologies. You could argue that they're looking at light. Um, but it's, it's still part of the, the whole um, electromagnetic spectrum. But right now we're using radio, radio waves. And most of these technologies that you, the examples you point to, they, they use wireless, which is, which as the name suggests, there are no wires connected. So they, they use mostly radio waves in one form or another to, to, to provide communication services whether it be short distance or long distance communication. Yeah, so it's, it would be very difficult to divorce the technology from the actual application. We are intertwined with the two. Okay, all right. So it's important that we understand what it is. Yeah, we, that we understand and we have some appreciation of what are some of the limits because um, you'd, you'd appreciate that for example, if you have your Wi-Fi device and you increase the distance, let's say you are, you're in the kitchen, your router is, let's say in the living room, and you go outside in the garage, you realize that if you want a call, that call will drop. 
And it's for that very same reason. There are, there are actual physical limits to, to how far radio waves can travel. And it depends on a number of their physicalities. But it's, it's, it's a for us to understand that there are actual limits to wireless technology and, and see how best we, we can make use of those resources. No, I'm smiling, Alvin, because you know, mm -hmm. I quarrel if I'm under the house hanging up clothes and I brought the, you know, the yes. to watch or listen to something and it drops. I'm complaining about the Wi Fi, not realizing exactly what it said, the limitations. That yes, you're outside the range. Yes, and that's that's one Good of the point. issues. Thanks, thanks for that. I stop quarreling now. <laughs> okay. Or if All you right. have a number of persons at your home using your Wi Fi, you notice that. Your, 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 the quality would degrade, so your speed would go down and so forth. So yeah, there are definitely limits to the technology. What they found out is that, and the impressive thing about um, telecommunications and so on is that they, are, they keep pushing the envelope. So right now, there are systems they are testing, which they, they call Wi-Fi 6E, that would provide greater bandwidth and greater speeds to persons. Um, they are looking for a number of applications, including what we call last mile technology, bringing broadband internet to places which normally would not get have internet service because of where they're located. They are far from um, urban areas. Um, there's not enough investment in, in infrastructure. So wireless technologies are actually bridging that divide. Okay. All right, just to follow up on that question, how can Excel ensure that radio frequency spectrum is efficiently utilized considering the emerging technologies you just mentioned? Yes, so part of our exercise at Excel is that we do, uh, we do a periodic review of what we call our regional, regional spectrum management plan. It's actually the, the, the blueprint on how spectrum is allocated in all the member states. So what happens is ECTEL um, goes through a public consultation process in which it puts forward the revision of its plan and it invites comments from stakeholders. If, if the if there's general agreement with what the plan is, it's then um, submitted to our, our um, Council of Ministers for approval, and then it becomes adopted by the National Telecommunication Regulatory Commission in each member state as the plan for use of spectrum in, in, in the ECTEL member states. So, um, and that's just only one part. We also coordinate regionally with um, other regulators through the Caribbean Telecom Telecommunications Union and also sub-regional, I should say regional when we talk about region within um, the OES, the Organization of American States and more so globally through the ITU to ensure that whatever standards or whatever spectrum plans we put forward are international, internationally accepted and they meet the rigors of be, going through an in-depth public consultation period. Okay. okay. I was going to ask you about the regional spectrum management plan, but you just made reference to it. Um, I know that this was recently launched. Has that process been closed or can persons still um, comment on it or what's the next step now? Yes, yes, that's a very good question, Coretta, and, and thanks for it. In terms of what we are currently doing with the revision of our ECTEL's Regional Spectrum Management Plan, it's going through um, a public consultation phase. So right now we are at the phase where we are accepting comments from the public. So persons, or any, in fact, anybody really can, can, can pull it up. It's available at the ECTEL website, www.ectel.int. -E you search for it, it will come up and you could submit your comments. Um, at this stage, we, we're taking in comments and then we would look at those comments and, and formulate basically, well, uh, 
we will basically look at the comments and where there's merit, we will take those comments on board in reshaping or revising our spectrum plan. So it's a, it's a process which we taking comments from, from st stakeholders, they feed into the process and we develop a policy document which is um, submitted for approval at the Council of Ministers level and then it's adopted by the ECTEL member states. Thank you. All right. Um, maybe you mentioned it or maybe you didn't, if you did, mm -hmm. apologies. But in terms of the plan, Alvin, in simple terms, what can consumers, you know, how can consumers really benefit from such a plan in simple terms? Yes, yeah, simple terms, um, it will make a spectrum, especially in the areas of mobile technology. We know everybody has a smartphone and they attach to their various networks. So part of our mandate is to, uh, to look at um, making advanced technologies or advanced telecommunications, or as we say in this era, electronic communication available to the citizen of the ECTEL member state. So part of our push with the spectrum the revision of the spectrum plan is to make more um, mobile and fixed wireless access spectrum available so we could have um, greater broadband applications and services available to member states. We're also looking at um, um, emergency communications as well. So we're also looking at making or putting in place policies to make available greater spectrum for emergency communications, especially in times of um, natural disaster, so that the governments would be able to coordinate the re um, disaster responses, both um, locally and internationally. Okay. So right now, as you just touched on something that I was going to talk about, so mm -hmm. right now you're saying you don't really have any mechanism in place for um, that sort of emergency um, for governments, so to speak, as it pertains to spectrum, or is it the is it a part of the plan? Yeah, there are there are. Uh, just make it clear, there are mechanisms in place for governments to communicate. Let's 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 be clear. What we are okay. doing, we are looking at. Um, where the international communities are going in terms of standardization of emergency broadcast spectrum. There are certain bands of spectrum that are set aside for emergency communications. So what ECTEL has been doing, working with the Caribbean Telecommunications Union and other partners, we've been trying to um, harmonize those bands throughout the region where they would where essentially if there's a, a, a emergency in one or two of the Caribbean countries, those bands would be available for communication and, and disaster relief. So it, you would need, for example, what happened in Dominica in, I believe it was 2017, with Hurricane Maria. The, if your entire communication network, the public communications network goes down, those frequency bands would be available for government to come to coordinate its emergency response regionally and nationally. And that's what we're looking at, standardizing across the board for all the Caribbean, as well as um, looking at what's happening in the US where the US has standardized certain emergency frequency band. So it allows us economies of scale in, um, in acquiring um, equipment for emergency communication. So we know that there, the US is a very large market and equipment manufacturers manufacture equipment. So what it allows, if we standardize our frequency bands, then that equipment can be used in St. Lucia, in Dominica, in Grenada, any of the ECTEL member states without much difficulty. You won't need to do anything much except plug in and have an operator operating that equipment. 
All right, that sounds progressive. Looking forward yes. to hearing more um, on that when it actually happens. All right, um, Alvin, so are you aware of any cases where Spectrum users abuse the use of their, um, use of their frequency? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we spoke about, yes. How, how, how does Excel handle this? Yeah, we spoke about interference, but there's also issues of persons who are not authorized or who don't hold a license or what we call a frequency authorization. So there are persons out there and Ectel with the assistance, or I should say the NTRC with the assistance of Ectel would investigate those persons and, and, and take measures to, to ensure that they comply with the laws as 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 in their country so if we're aware of a case or if anybody's aware of the case they can contact um, their local ntrcs on that matter and the ntrcs are equipped and they do have trained personnel to deal with those matters okay so in order to avoid that, Alvin, you know, um, can you just briefly um, say what the process is for obtaining the frequency authorization? Yes, yes. So the process where you would apply to the NTRC, the application forms are available at their, on their website or in office. So if you, for example, you're looking for, a, let's say, a radio license, you contact the NTRC and they would advise you on which license you need and what frequency authorization. There's a, there are fees attached, application fees, you pay it, you, um, submit the application form, and the NTRC would let you know what, at what stage your application is at. And when once approved, the license and the frequency authorization, it's submitted to the minister for, um, um, for grant and it's, it's given to the, the, the person and you pay, there's a, some, there's their fees attached to the license and the authorization. But that's just general process. Uh, if you more detail, you could contact your local NTRC, they'll be more than willing to assist. Indeed, okay, yes. thanks for that response, Alvin. Yes, um, you're most welcome. In terms of broadband, we didn't really go into it. What is broadband? Well, simply put, um, as the name said, broadband, it's, it, it's what it is, it's, um, it's in telecommunications, when we talk about broadband, we're talking about what is known as wide um, bandwidth of transmission data. I think that's as simple as you could put, which has, um, which transports mul multiple signals or applications. Um, you would appreciate that right now the um, internet services which provide um, um, up to, well I would say mega megabits per second and that connection is always on and always available. So when we talk about broadband in the sense of telecommunications, we're talking about just that wide data transmission versus narrow band. And um, there, I mean, there are technical standards on what you defined as broadband, but however, in our current all you can eat environment, the more data you, you, you get, the, the happy people are. So when we talk about broadband, we talk about just that. Okay. Um, I think when I looked over the, the regional plan, I, I saw something about the revision of frequency bands for broadband wireless access applications to yes. conform with emerging international standards. So I'm wondering if we do this, does it um, negatively impact spectrum users in our member states in any way? Um, no, actually it benefits members, our members, our citizens um, in that, that regard. When we're talking about um, opening up or broadening, providing um, wireless broadband service, we are talking about the, ne the next generation of technology. So we're talking about currently, I believe all the Ectel member states are at a level of having 4G LT. We're actually looking at um, opening spectrum up for 5G technology. 
So that's where we're heading. We're looking at um, broad, wider um, swaths of spectrum for those applications, including our, um, we, what we call our fixed wireless access. In other words, providing wireless internet versus the fixed line internet. So all of this is part of our development mandate for telecom, I should say electronic communications in the Excel member states. Okay. Okay. So I, I get that part, Alvin, that it's going to, you know, make our lives better and so on. But is there a period in which things mm -hmm. might not work to facilitate the next step? Maybe that's how I should have put it, or it will happen seamlessly. Um, we're hoping that on the policy level, once we get those policies out, there would be, well, there would have to be interest on the private private industry side to take up that spectrum and, and roll out those networks and services to the public. So, but what we, what we are trying to do here, um, is that we are trying to take down all the hindrances, all the barriers. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at international standards for spectrum in terms of what's happening internationally with the adoption of new spectrum and uh, the applications and, and allow any operator that is licensed to roll out those spectrum um, with as with minimum hindrance, in other words. So um, we are, op as I said, we're looking at uh, other spec uh, um, frequency bands to open up and um, we just, um, any policy that would make, I should say make it difficult because what we're doing, uh, once we adopt those bands, then the operators, um, other third party persons can roll out services, of course, um, with a license to, to the market. All right. Yes. All right. So thank you so much. We're about to wrap up, but is there anything that I probably did not ask you that you think is really important for you to, to close off with? Yeah, I think we did a, 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 a decent uh, coverage of the topic where it comes to spectrum. Um, I touched on it earlier. I would um, encourage persons who, even as a casual observer, you could take a look at the spectrum, our public consultation on our spectrum plan. There are certain questions there which may or may not <laughs> meet your, um, your area of interest, but there, there are definitely some things there for everybody, including if you, as you say, you, you listen to your car radio. So even there, there's some aspect there for, for the casual observer, but take a look at it and see, um, um, yeah, and get involved. Send, send a comment to the, to, to Ectel on, on the spectrum plan and we'll take it from there. Okay, so um, you probably were not expecting this question, but I'm going to yes. ask you anyway. If there's a young person watching Alden that has an interest in becoming an engineer, specifically a spectrum officer, um, what advice would you give them in terms of their studies? Oh, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a budding, well, not budding, it's a, it's a I mean, <laughs> technology and um, engineering, it's a high demand field. I would encourage um, any young person, even old person <laughs> get involved in, um, the area of interest. Uh, there, there are a number of applications from telemedicine, you name it, um, financial systems. I mean, the whole world, every, and COVID has taught us that everything has basically have an aspect of electronic communications in it. And it, 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 it is only growth. I don't see it as and that interest going down there, there will all be continuous growth in the sector. So I would encourage, if you're interested, reach out. Um, if, um, you could get my probably email address and shoot me an email and I could assist you. There are a number of um, colleagues 
throughout the region that have that do some online um, YouTube channels where they assist where they assist young persons who have interest in radio communications from your amateur clubs to, to persons who, who mentor students. So you can reach out to me, I'll put you in contact with, with those groups so that at least they could set you on the right track when it comes to engineering. Awesome, okay. so yes. much for that, Alvin. Um, so, this was indeed time well spent. I learned a lot about Spectrum. Um, you really simplified it. Uh, happy you did. <laughs> yes, you simplified it. And we you know we have a better understanding of Excel's role as well as the NTRC's role in managing this important. Yes. I think you call it a scarce resource. Yes, it um, is. It is. It's a scarce resource that we have to manage properly to ensure that our member states get the our member states get the maximum benefit from it. Um, Coretta, I would just like to add, probably in future, future episodes, what we can do is actually, well, when, you know, this COVID thing kind of normalizes to some state, is probably do some field exercises where we actually go out in the field and see how, how the NTRCs and ECTEL actually manage or monitor the spectrum. I think that 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 can be very helpful, especially to somebody who's looking at a future in that area. So. I love that idea. I'm going to make a note of it so I can um, hold you to it. Yes, <laughs> yes. I, I love the idea of actually going into the field and seeing what we're exactly. talking about. Exactly. Actually, actually, when we talk about this thing we call spectrum, we could actually put it in, in pictures or or in chat so that they could actually, there is actually, it actually is, it's something to see. So yeah, and, and the equipment is pretty, pretty awesome. State of the art equipment that's on. So it's, it's pretty interesting. Anybody who has an interest in electronics or applications, they, they'll find it interesting. Okay, no, the, really, I, I love the idea. And as you rightfully said, when things normalizes, if they do, uh, Definitely something we'll 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 do. We could do a live and then yes. showcase what it is that you're speaking. Most about. definitely Thanks for that suggestion, Alvin. You're most welcome. All right. So if you have any questions at all, just put it in the comments below, and um, we'll try to respond to the best of our ability and as soon as possible. So just leave your questions. If you are interested in what Alvin spoke about and you want to pursue that, you could you know reach out to us and we could connect you as he rightfully said. Um, so we could put you on the right path. So thank you so much for being here with us. If you have not already liked us on social media, please do that. It's not going to take you very long. We are Ectel Authority on Instagram and Twitter and at Ectel on YouTube and Facebook. So Ectel Bytes is a production of the Eastern Caribbean Telecommunications Authority. And we will be live on our Facebook page on the fourth Wednesday of every month from 2 p.m. EST. So make sure you join us in September. That will be September 22nd for episode number six. I'm your host, Karata Cookstraws, Ectas Communications and Media Relations Manager. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, do keep safe and take care. <laughs>